Wahedar Namaste Adab Sia Kal. This is CS Uncle Kanchia welcoming each one of you in this amazing session on your most awaited important chapter advanced capital budget because this is newly introduced for the May 24 examinations and beyond. So makes it so very important. Let's get this done and dusted in a span of approximately two hours. And trust me, will be a full power packed uh, performance or session ensuring that you get the maximum concepts clear in your head. For that, please ensure that, yes, you are liking the video. That's your present sir in the session. And also ensure that you are sharing it with maximum of your friends from South India who need this because I, I've got a lot of requests and if we are able to reach to the maximum people, it will be helpful for all of them. The more we give, the more we get. Okay. Also, the notes. Let me discuss few things about the notes which will be shared in the description box. The Telegram channel is shared. Yeah. So, the Telegram channel is shared. In that Telegram channel, uh, in the first comment, you can just go join us. I will be sharing you the notes of capital budgeting. Uh, what is so important about the notes? Obviously, they are from my magic book. But what I have specially done for you in this capital budgeting thing is that there are approximately 30, 27 plus 11, around 40 questions in your module. What I have done is, as per the ICA module, I have bifurcated this. So say illustration 1 is based on calculation of NPV. Say illustration 4 is based on expected NPV. Illustration 7 is based on RADR. Illustration 8 is based on certainty equivalent. How would you know that? So I have made this summary for you. Also, after doing this to our session, you will be confident to solve all the questions that are given here. Yes, at least in terms of concepts, I have covered everything. Be it the expected NPV, standard deviation, sensitivity, risk adjusted discount rate, decision tree, replacement of machine. Everything is covered in this two hour power pack session. Till exams, at least listen it for two, three times and it will be the best thing that you will get. Plus, so what I have done, guys, is yes, the magic book. If you have not ordered, Again, the link is there. Please order it for your last day revision. Nothing else. I've kept the price $2.99 as a very basic price uh, for each one of you so that you can have it for your exams. For exam day, you need something which has all the formulas, mind you, all the theory, everything at one place, all the master sums which have to be done on the day of exams. And that's what this magic book is all about. So I'm sure majority of you would have purchased it. If not, go ahead with it. And you would know how, how important it is. It has everything as I have just discussed. And this is what I am going to discuss with each one of you. So, it be it the theory part, be it the practical sums part, be it the formulas, be it the examples. What I have done, do you know? I have taken a concept and, and then see this. There is a concept probability, ICI module sum related to that. I have taken a concept variance standard deviation, ICI module sum related to that. Uh, there is a RADR question, ICAI module sum related to that. So by default, we are solving the concept, the ICAI module question. And end of the day, that's what we want, right? So on that positive note, let, let, let me start with this chapter. Really excited to take you through this uh, amazing revision session. In your comments box, you have to tell me which is the next chapter that you want any specific concept that you want let me know also uh, i know a lot of students who uh, at times leave few chapters in option do not do that uh, i particularly provide chapter wise lectures as well and phase wise lectures as well so if you want say if you are down with forex and don't understand and you want to leave it in option my suggestion will be don't do that take chapter wise uh, lectures from my end and use that so that all the chapters are done thoroughly from your end. If you have seen this uh, RTP, uh, MTP of this attempt, you will find that the MTP has almost all the chapters. Mutual fund, security valuation, mergers and acquisition, forex, portfolio, startup finance, financial policy, corporate strategy, securitization, derivatives, everything, risk management. You cannot leave advanced capital budgeting. You cannot leave anything in option. Plus theory, practical theory, more than 25 marks. 
just goes on to show that how important every chapter is including theory and all of that so yes uh that's about it now as i told you let's get started your like should be there comment as to what do you want from my end be it a chapter be it a concept be it a anything right and see you in the next session so let's start the game of advanced capital budgeting so the first thing is see this is advanced capital budgeting decision so obviously by default icai assumes that you know what is capital budgeting that you have obviously done in your intermediate but still we will start things from the basics if you see the index everything will be covered in in our session uh, the intro npv inflationary conditions discount rates the real and the nominal discount rates risk analysis techniques statistical variance standard deviation coefficient of variation radr certainty equivalent and everything right so now without wasting any time let us start with the whole session the first thing starts with obviously concept of npv you know when you speak of capital budgeting the word npv is something almost symmetrical or uh, identical to capital budgeting now what is npv it is the net present value this is the factor or the metric through which we decide whether the project has to be accepted or it is to be rejected if the npv is positive we will accept the project if the npv is negative we will reject the project so what is npv npv is net present value so whenever we are planning to start a project obviously when i am speaking of the project this is a big project which will involve uh, at least 3 to 4 years of duration so now if there are four years in all for which we are working out this whole project it becomes so important to understand that what is the total amount of money that i am going to receive over a period of four years and then i should also know what is the amount of money that i am going to spend right now so what is the amount that i am spending right now and what is the amount of money that i am going to receive from the four years of the project and based on this if my inflow is more than the outflow then definitely i will accept the project but do you feel the value of money remains same even after four years the answer is no what 100 rupees is to you is it the same to your parents when they were of your age is it this the same 100 rupees has the same value what your grandparents were there of your age suppose your age is 20 years now today if i give you 100 rupees you will be like what what we are going to get in this 100 rupees in a single day you will spend it if i give this same thing to your parents when they were of your age that is 20 years when they were of 20 years and somebody had given them 100 rupees they would have spent 15 days using that 100 rupees and if that same 100 rupees were given to your grandparents they would have spent more than 2 months using that 100 rupees why because the value of money today is definitely different from what it is going to be tomorrow so if the value of money is going to change on a daily basis here my project is going to be for 4 years so what is the value of money after 4 years what is the value of money after 4 years i will have to bring it at today's value and then compare it with my outflow and that is where my correct decision will be taken are we understanding guys and that basically is called as the present value that basically is called as the present value i'm sure you know the basic concept of time value of money because we are in the revision session we will have to assume certain things so that basically is called as the present value and if the present value is positive so what are we calculating here present value of cash inflow so for the four years that we are going to earn money what is the present value of that cash inflow so any money earned after four years will have a lower value third a little higher second a little higher first much more higher today very high right so that's what we will have to calculate the present value of cash inflow now the burning question is sir what is cash inflow <coughs> cash inflow for us is sales whatever suppose i am into the manufacturing and sales of this calculator 
if I sell 10,000 units of calculator per annum for 100 rupees. So can I say 10 lakh rupees is what I have earned in terms of my revenue? But in order to make this calculator, 40% is my uh, say raw material cost or variable cost. So out of that 10 lakh rupees, 4 lakh rupees is gone. I am left with 6 lakh rupees. With that say 1 lakh rupees, I have to pay for my rental and say one 2 lakh rupees I have to pay for my uh, staff and everything. I am left with 3 lakh rupees. Suppose in order to start the business, I had taken a loan. I had taken a loan. So, uh, so chalo, there are certain machinery that I had purchased. Now, if I had purchased a certain amount of machinery, I will charge depreciation as per PNL account. So, I will charge depreciation. I will get the earnings before tax. To which, to which, yeah, so here, oh, not at, it is less. To which I will reduce the tax component and I will get the earnings after tax. But remember, here we are focusing on the cash inflow. Guys, we are focusing on the cash inflow. Now, whenever I speak of the cash inflow, I should be focused on the cash amount. But this earnings after tax is after deducting depreciation. But I have deducted this depreciation because I know I am going to get a tax benefit of depreciation. Once I have taken this tax benefit, now I've got the earnings after tax. I will add back this depreciation to get my real net cash inflow. Net cash inflow is what I will get here. Are we clear everyone? So net present value for that we need the present value of cash inflow. For that we need to know what is cash inflow. So guys cash inflow will be sales minus variable cost is equal to contribution less fixed cost is equal to earning before depreciation and tax less depreciation why to give tax benefit is equal to earning before tax less taxes we will get earnings after tax to that we will add back depreciation this is something that we would have done in our uh, intermediate as well just a quick recap so add back depreciation we will get the net cash inflow this is going to be the format in a lot of sums which are going to come guys so please ensure that you are clear with this format. At times, the question will directly give you earning before depreciation and tax. If that is the scenario, you can directly reduce the tax and add the tax saving on depreciation. See, effectively what we are doing here is, say, 100 rupees if I am reducing here, say, 10 rupees if I am reducing here, I will get the tax benefit 30%. So then so this is the benefit that I'm getting and then I add back the 10. So effectively what I am doing is I am just adding back the tax benefit on depreciation instead of reducing once then adding it back. I can also write it directly as tax savings on depreciation. So if EBDT is given we can reduce the tax EAT plus we will add back directly tax savings on depreciation, we will get the net cash inflow. Are we clear how to uh, calculate the net cash inflow? Suppose now if I have to write here in terms of formula, please help me guys. I hope your books are also open. Suppose now here if I have to write down the formula, how will I write down selling price minus variable cost is equal to contribution less fixed cost is equal to earning before depreciation and taxes to which will will reduce the depreciation to give the tax benefit we will get earning before taxes to which we will reduce taxes we will get earnings after taxes to which we will add depreciation hey something good everybody are we clear everyone Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So add back depreciation and we will get the cash inflows. We will get the cash inflows. Now, the other way to calculate the cash inflow was, everybody, come on. The other way to calculate the cash inflow was earning before taxes, less earning before depreciation and taxes. So earning before depreciation and taxes to which we will reduce the tax, we will get the earning before tax, to which we will add tax savings on depreciation, we will get the cash inflow. We will get the cash inflow. This cash inflow, we will discount it 
at the discounting factor given in the question and we will get the present value of cash inflow which is required here less present value of cash outflow which will be directly given we will get the net cash inflow are we clear everybody yes sir now this was the basic which we already had studied in our intermediate level yes sir now comes the impact of inflation on capital budgeting decision so now the questions will give you so what i have made for you all is this see here this will tell us every illustration and every practical question and its concept so i have specifically made this for you all so that during the examination time you all can refer so this is say for example illustration one this is as per ici module as per our book also this is there just that we have just numbered it question one two three and like that so it is based on calculation of npv the other is based on inflation adjustment the other is based on say single period npv multi-period npv variance and standard deviation so as and when we reach to that concept we will also connect to these illustrations so that we are practically clear as well so what i am doing is i am making you understand what i am doing is i am making you understand all the formulas at the same time the connected questions are also given in the magic book that also will be will be done alongside yes guys gotcha now comes the next concept and that is impact of inflation on capital budgeting decision so does inflation have any impact on any decision the answer is always always yes so in capital budgeting we can see that there are two kinds of uh, you can say cost uh, and revenue so one is revenue and the other is cost if the question has given you revenue without inflation or cost without inflation you will have to add that inflation percentage and then you will get the revenue including inflation so how do you do that so whatever revenue will be given to you multiply by say 10 percent is the inflation rate so 0 0.1 right 10 percent so 10 percent is 0 0.1 so this will become whatever is the revenue into 1.1 say next year the inflation is given as 9 percent so your revenue will be see first year it increased by 10 percent next year it will increase by 9 percent so you will have to take the first year also and then the second year now suppose take an example of this calculator now today this yeah suppose today this calculator costs 100 rupees right i am telling you the inflation rate next year is going to be 10 percent so can i say this is going to be 110 next year i am going to be it will become 9 percent so will you just add 100 plus 9 percent in the second year no sir from 100 to 110 it has already gone after first year from 110 it will all increase more by 9 percent so that is what we will also do here whenever inflation is given for numerous years first year second year third year keep on multiplying that are you clear so this is how you will calculate the revenue and cost if inflation is also given in the question done now there is a concept of nominal cash flows and real cash flows one is including inflation the other is excluding inflation so let me tell you nominal includes inflation and real excludes inflation now what happens is this the cash flows either will be given you nominal cash flows or it will be given real cash flows now for nominal and real there are two things one is the cash flow the other is the discount rate one is the cash flow as you can see here and the other is the discount rate as you can see here so always remember that for the nominal cash flows we should always have nominal discounting rate and for the real cash flows hello for the real cash flows you will always have the guys you will always have the real discounting rate so question will give you very smartly the question will give you the cash flows are nominal and then they will very smartly twist that the discounting rate that is given is real so if the cash flows are nominal but the real discounting rate is real is it comparable is this comparable the answer is no so what you will have to do for 
applying nominal cash flows you will require nominal discounting rate and for applying real cash flows you will require the real discounting rate so so let's write it down the second concept this was the first concept called as npv now we write down the second concept the second concept is of real real and nominal just write this much real and nominal we will write here for real that it is without inflation for nominal we will write it is with inflation are we clear everybody yes second thing second thing if real cash flows are given always use real discounting factor if nominal cash flows are given always use nominal discounting factor any questions anybody or any doubts anybody no sir done so we are done with these three things now how do you calculate sir how do you calculate the nominal cash flow i told you nominal includes inflation and real excludes inflation the dividing line between them is inflation right so one is nominal other is real the dividing line is inflation so what is nominal cash flow sir nominal cash flow is including inflation so real cash flow plus the inflation and and what is the real cash flow nominal cash flow but without inflation so we will write here so guys we will write here that first we will write the nominal cash flows we will write the nominal cash flows the nominal cash flows is real cash flow into 1 plus inflation rate now if you know how to calculate the nominal cash flows then can i say from this you can also calculate the real cash flows so if nominal cash flows are given it is real cash flow into 1 plus inflation rate and if you have to calculate the real cash flows you can do it like this how it will be nominal cash flows divide by 1 plus inflation rate hey something to do are we clear everybody so this is how the system works this is how the system works why am i telling you all because there will be questions in which they will give you nominal cash flows and you have to convert them into real cash flows how will you do that so real cash flow will be nominal cash flow divided by one plus inflation rate and at times they will give you uh, real cash flow and you will have to convert them into nominal cash flows by multiplying it with the inflation rate gotcha everybody so for this i have given the formula now when you are revising you just have to look at this formula you will be able to recollect everything same is going to be the case with the discounting factors as well so here the nominal discounting factor obviously nominal discounting factor obviously includes obviously includes the inflation rate as well so it will be 1 plus real discounting factor into 1 plus inflation rate into 1 plus inflation rate now suppose in the question real discounting factor is given suppose in the question inflation rate is given will you be able to calculate the nominal discounting factor the answer is yes so we'll write it thoroughly it is 1 plus nominal discounting factor equal to so everything has to be compounded 1 plus real discounting factor into 1 plus inflation rate therefore finally 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 nominal discounting factor will be hello nominal discounting factor will be 1 plus real discounting factor into 1 plus inflation rate inflation rate all of this minus 1 all of this minus 1 see here see here see here see here so see here nominal discounting rate is 1 plus real discounting rate into 1 plus inflation rate Achha, minus 1 minus 1 and same is going to be the case with a real discounting rate 
it will be 1 plus nominal discounting rate upon 1 plus inflation rate minus 1. Gotcha everyone. This is going to be the real discounting rate. Yes sir, we are totally clear till here. Now obviously sir, why did you tease this? Because this is going to come in the examination and here is the example right in front of you. So here we have a projected cash flows from a project under evaluation. The cash flows have been made at expected prices after recognizing inflation. Everybody has to tell me, everybody has to tell me what is this? Sir, this is nominal cash flows. Now are you clear guys? Ha. Huh. <sighs> Arun is asking sir, which, which language is this? <laughs> So at times what happens is we make this uh, document when converting into PDF. If it doesn't catch the font, it converts it into some uh, absurd character. So that's what would have happened. Anyways, we are clear because I have also written it here for you. Chal, now tell me, Sashi company's cash flows are what nominal or real? Sir, it is nominal cash flows. How did you come to know? After recognizing inflation. The firm's cost of capital is 10%. Expected inflation rate is 5%. Now, can I discount it directly by 10%? No, because guys, this is real discounting factor. But we need the... Correct. We need the nominal discounting factor. We need the nominal discounting factor. So we will quickly convert this into a nominal discounting factor. So here we are. Uh, how do we calculate the nominal discounting factor? It is 1 plus real discounting factor 1.1 into 1 plus inflation 1.05 the whole minus 1. We just just came up with the formula, right? So tell me what will this be? So it will be 1.1 into 1.05 minus 1 and it will be 15.5%. When you solve this, you will get 1.155, which is 15.5%, which is 15.5%. Hey, Samji Guru, are we clear everybody? Now, if you see the question, see this is discounted at 15.5%. Discounted at 15.5%. Look at the cash flows. Look at the cash flows. 72, 30, 40, 30. So, nominal cash flows. Hello. Nominal cash flows discounted at nominal discounting rate. And then now we can take the decision. Sir, what if this discounting rate is 10%? This is real discounting rate? Yes, sir. Why can't you convert this? Cash flows into real cash flows. I can do that. Who has said no? So let's convert that. How do you convert the real cash flows into nominal cash flows? Do you remember? Uh, sorry, how do you calculate the nominal cash flows into real cash flows? Tell, tell, bolo, bolo, tell, tell. So can I say, suppose here we have, uh, yeah, say suppose we have 30. So it's, it's a very, very easy thing. See, we have written the formula also that if I want to convert this into real cash flows, what will I do? Nominal cash flows. So do we have the nominal cash flows? Yes, sir. It is 30. Divide by 1 plus inflation rate. What is the inflation rate? Can I say 5%? So 30 divided by 1.05. Yeah. So 30 divided by. So 30 divided by 1.05. So your adjusted will be 28.57. 28.57. Now, this 28.57 is real cash flow. This is then discounted at the discounting rate, which is real discounting rate, 10%. So, 1 divided by 1.1 is 0.909. So, into 0.909. So, 28.57 into 0.909 and you will get 25.98 as the present value of cash flows in real terms. In real terms, guys, are we clear? Please guys, tell me, are we clear? Yes, everybody is clear with the concept of real cash flows, nominal cash flows, real discount rate, nominal discount rate with the example. This cash flows is real. Sorry, this is nominal. How do you convert it into real? Nominal divided by 1 plus inflation rate is equal to real cash flows. Into the present value factor will give us the real cash flows. Real net cash flows. Are you clear guys? Yes. So with this, we complete the first two basic parts and that is my uh, concept of uh, net present value and the concept of discount rates and the concept of 
discount rates next we move on next we move on to the techniques of risk analysis now this is where we are entering into the techniques of risk analysis just to tell you that yeah, two concepts done two concepts done now starts the risk analysis part guys so there are various techniques to manage the risk analysis statistical techniques conventional techniques and other techniques now i will take it one by one what i have done is as soon as i am done with the formula i have taken a sum so that we are clear in terms of logic as well right so here let's start with the first technique and that is the technique of probability all of you have been doing it and especially if you have done portfolio management with me you know how probability can be used so same way here the probability will be used in terms of cash flows so here the expected net present value hello the expected net present value uh, is there is what we have to calculate whenever the word probability comes always use the word expected do you remember average return and expected return in portfolio management same way here so far we were just saying npv now we are saying expected npv why because the cash inflows are going to be multiplied by the probability so see here how it is going to work out expected cash flow is cash inflow into probability cash inflow into probability this cash inflow into probability will give us a expected cash flow and then we will calculate the present value of expected cash flow after dividing it with the discounting factor so third is based on probability now how do you calculate your see again i'm telling you your concepts of portfolio management will really be helpful if if you have to be a champion here so we so far calculated npv now as soon as the word probability enters we will say the word expected npv okay sir got this part got this part right now how do you calculate expected npv see so far cash inflows were given to you now they will give you now they will want you to calculate the expected cash flows acha how do you calculate the expected cash flows how do you calculate the expected cash flows cash inflows multiplied by discounting factor so cash inflow of first year multiplied by discounting factor of first year cash inflow of second year multiplied by sorry probability of first year multiplied by second year probability so this way is we will get the expected cash flow 1 expected cash flow two are we understanding to this we will apply to this we will apply the discounting factor so say discounting factor is 10.10 so 0.909 0.826 and then we will get the expected cash inflows are you clear guys so expected present value of cash inflows okay let's use the correct word expected present value of cash inflows okay 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 expected present value of cash inflows and expected present value of cash inflows minus cash outflows we will get expected npv we will get expected we will get expected npv hey some you do everybody so this is what the whole thing is this is what the whole thing is first we will calculate the uh, see the answer is present value of expected cash inflow minus initial investment we know what is initial investment nothing greater right present value of expected cash inflow divide it first calculate the expected cash inflow divide this divide this now what do you what what do you mean by expected cash inflow well it is cash inflow into probability how do you convert this into present value by multiplying it by the discounting factor we will get the expected cash inflow minus initial investment and we will get the expected npv are you clear everybody 
Bolo bolo. Dal dal. Yes, sir. Dan 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 dan. Next. So here is the question. Quickly, I'll now be able to solve this. See, we have the probability. We have the cash inflows. So cash inflows into probability. Cash inflows into probability. We will get the expected cash flows. This is the expected cash flow. To this, we will do the discounting. To this, we will do the discounting. So, cash inflow. First, ca expected cash inflow is 6,000. Second, expected cash inflow is 4,800. Third is 4,200. To this, we will do the discounting. To this, we will do the discounting. We will get the expected present value of cash inflow. You should write here, boss. Expected present value of cash inflow minus initial investment. And we will get the expected net present value. Are we clear? Now, if this is clear, trust me, the remaining answers will come very, very naturally. That's the reason I take my time in explaining the base concept. Now, once that is done, the remaining part will become easy. And next part is variance. Even in your portfolio management, how did you start? You started with the expected probabilities, expected returns. Then you went to the risk, which was the variance. How did you calculate the variance there? x minus x bar the whole square into probability and then you did the summation almost same formula you are going to use one just that x will be replaced here the x was return and that was expected return here the x will be cash inflow minus the expected cash inflow so cash flow minus the expected cash flow that's it so your x is expected hello it is expected cash flow minus sorry so this is the given cash flow minus the expected cash flow so given cash flows minus expected cash flows into probability and then this comes the summation there comes the summation this is square this is square. Same. Same formula. Just this. Now, given cash flows are given in the question. Expected cash flows, how to calculate? You know how to calculate the expected cash flows, guys. Tell me how it is. It is cash flows into probability plus cash flows into probability 2. So, this was 1, 1, 2, 2. Cash flows into probability. All of this multiplied will give us expected cash flows. All of this multiplied together will give us expected cash flows. Gotcha, everybody. So, this expected cash flows here, given cash flows are this already given, multiply the whole square, multiplied by the probabilities. So, then we will get the final answer. See here. What is this expected net cash flow? Cash flow 1 into probability 1 plus cash flow 2 into probability 2. Cash flow n into probability n will give us the expected cash flows. NCF minus expected ca uh, cash flow square into probability. And we will get the answer. Now, how do you calculate the variance? <laughs> Easy peasy. So, uh, how do you calculate the, sorry, the standard deviation? So, standard deviation, you don't have to use extra brains at all. Because standard deviation is sigma. So, it is root of variance. All we have to do is calculate this. All we have to do is calculate this. And easily, immediately, we will get the root and get the standard deviation. Gotcha, everybody. So, standard deviation is root of variance. Done. Then, we have the coefficient of variation. This is, again, very easy. Just the use of formula. We calculate a standard deviation using the above method. Then, upon expected return or expected cash flow. So, this coefficient of variation is basically the risk return format. Do you remember in portfolio management, I used to teach you all the uh, Markowitz efficient frontier domination theory, same return, lowest risk dominates, same risk, highest return dominates. But if risk and return are varying amongst various uh, uh, shares, then in that case, you will decide based on COV, risk return. So, what is the risk here? Standard deviation. What is the return here? Expected return or expected cash flows as the case may be. And lower the CV, COV, better it is. Now, this is the question. 
we have to calculate the variance, the standard deviation, the coefficient of variation quickly. We will do it for this as well. So here we have been given the cash flows 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Multiply by the probabilities 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We will get the expected cash flows. So cash flow multiply the minus the expected cash flows. Cash flows minus the expected cash flows. Cash flows minus the expected cash flows. Cash flows minus the expected cash flows. The whole square into probability. The whole square into probability. First probability is 0.1. Second probability is 0.2. The whole square into probability. This will give us variance. The root we do, we will get the standard deviation. Part 1, part 2 of the question done. Then they've asked for coefficient of variation. We have the standard deviation already. We have the expected cash flows already. We have the expected cash flows already. We will get the coefficient of variation lower the better. Lower the better. And with this, we complete the first part of the technique, which is the statistical technique, probability, variance of standard deviation and coefficient of variation. Are we clear everyone? Gotcha. Everybody, please tell, please confirm. Now, next in line after the statistical technique is the conventional technique. So, conventional means new. So, conventional or old you can say. What are the conventional techniques? So, first is the risk adjusted discount rate, certainty equivalent and sense. Yeah, these two, sorry. So, very easy. Conventional techniques, let's understand them. So, one is your risk adjusted discount rate. What is this? See here. Whenever you are discounting your cash inflows, you will require the discounting rate. So, RADR, risk adjusted discounting rate says that, that it will be a combination of risk free rate plus risk premium. It will be a combination of risk free rate plus risk premium. So, RADR obviously is based on the concept that investors demand high return from risky projects. So, risk-free for sure, they need that much discounting rate. But obviously, premium for bearing the extra risk, for bearing the extra risk. So, the question will directly be given to you that risk-free return is 7%, risk premium expected is 7%. So, total, the discounting factor will be 14%. Oh, they have not, <laughs> not taken the second part. So, it is 7 plus 7 equal to 14%. So, we will say the year, the discounting factor at RADR will be 14%. That's it. So, simple. Then comes certainty equivalent. Now, whenever you are going to say, for example, I tell you, what are the chances that you will attain 85 marks in the subject AFM? So, you will say, sir, uh, I feel that there is a 75% probability that I will give, I will get 85 marks. So, what you are saying, there is a certainty and that certainty factor of 0.75 that you gave me is called as alpha in our language. So, they are saying that any cash flow is always risky. Any cash flow is always risky. You have to multiply it by a alpha or a certainty factor to get the certain cash flows. And then this certain cash flow should be discounted at the given rate. Got it guys? So, first the cash flows are given. But this is not going to be the certain cash flows. Are you sure that you are going to attain this much cash flows? There will always be a uncertainty. So, let's make it certain. How? By multiplying it by a, you can, you, not a probability factor, but a convincing factor called as the alpha. How much is the convincing factor that you are going to get 60 plus in AFM? So, 95% I am sure. So, your certain marks are 60 into 95%. So, 0.95. 60 into 0.95 that for sure I will secure 60 into say 0.95 and that is 57. So, that becomes your certain marks. Like that, this becomes your certain cash flows. Okay. Good. People feel 100% sir, 60 cross we are going to do. Very good. I am proud of you. So, certain 
mark certain cash flows gotcha everybody discount it with the given discounting rate and you will get the final answer so whatever cash flows are given multiply that by the alpha which is the certainty factor and we will get the certain cash flows discount it and you will get it so this is how we complete the conventional techniques as well this is how we can complete the hello hello this is how we complete the conventional techniques as well risk adjusted discounting rate and certainty equivalent we want at least reverse of 57 certainty that i gave 75 for sure for sure okay chalo then comes the other techniques guys then comes the other techniques so Sensitivity analysis, scenario analysis, simulation analysis, and decision tree. Chalo, let's start with that. Uh, the other techniques which are there. Now, first is going to be the uh, sensitivity analysis. Now, in case of sensitivity analysis, one is a simple way. What we have to do is, chalo, I'll explain the sensitivity analysis part here. But before that, oh my God, we are left with so many formulas which we had to write. So, after standard deviation, which formula was there, guys? Let's keep on writing so that uh, we are on our toes. Yeah, it was a coefficient of variation of one formula, right? Yeah, coefficient of variation. So let's write that coefficient of variation and it is risk by return. What is risk? Here the standard deviation and the expected cash flow or expected present value. Then we have the seventh factor guys. Then we have the seventh factor. I mean seventh formula which is the RADR. So RADR. Risk. Adjusted discount rate. So here it is a combination of risk free plus risk premium. Risk free plus risk premium. So what is it? The risk free rate plus the risk premium. Okay, then we moved on to the certainty equivalent, the alpha. So, the eighth formula was certainty equivalent approach. So, it is certain cash flows into or cash flows into certainty factor. I will write here cash flows. into alpha certainty factor Achha. done okay. alpha into expect cash flows risky or expected cash flows done then we move on to the yeah. so far so good Okay, then we move on to the next formula and that basically is the sensitivity analysis. Let's write out. Very, very important guys. Trust me on this, will you? So, sensitivity analysis. Okay, so what will come in sensitivity analysis guys? Pay attention. Huh? How does one change in factor affects my overall net percent value? So, in this what will happen is, say you will first calculate the current net percent value. We will first calculate the current net percent value. So, calculate the current net percent value. Now, change one factor. So, change in one factor. What will this do? 
this change in one factor results in change in NPV. So, change in one factor and remember other factors remaining same. Other factors remaining same. Will What will it do? It will change the NPV. So, it will impact the NPV. So, how does it work? Therefore, the overall impact on NPV by change of one factor is called sensitivity. Is called sensitivity. Are you clear guys? Now what could be the factors? Guys, what could be the factors? It could be selling price. It could be variable cost. It could be fixed cost. It could be discounting factor. It could be project life. It could be anything, etc., etc., etc. So change in any one factor and other factors remaining same. What is it going to give the impact on the NPV? And that basically, guys, is called as the sensitivity analysis. That basically is called as the sensitivity analysis. So see here used to study the impact of changes in the variables on the outcome of the project. So, finding variables which have an influence on the NPV or the IRR, then establishing variables and changing, analyzing the effect of change in each variables on the NPV of the project. Now, 2.5% adverse variance in say capital cost. What will be the impact on the NPV? Only capital cost will change. Other all things remaining same. Only say 2.5% adverse variance of selling price. Only selling price will change. Others all remaining same. So that is what we will have to check. That is what we will have to check. So uh, any adverse variance in capital cost, selling price, variable cost, whatever. Recalculate NPV by increasing capital cost by keep 2.5% keeping all other variables same. And that is the example that I have taken here that I have taken here. Are you clear everybody? So say initial capital cost 400 crore. Now in this case, first we have to calculate the normal cash flow. So normal present value is 134.6. Normal present value is 134.6. Now say I have to change initial capital cost. So I will change initial capital cost. By how much? They have said by change it by 2.5% adverse variable in each case. So initial capital cost was 400 crores was 400 crores has now increased by 2.5 percent has now see adverse variance in a capital cost is increased adverse variance in a capital cost is increased so 400 plus 2.5 percent is 410 so initial capital cost increases to rupees 410 initial capital cost increases to rupees 410 crores 410 crores Okay. All right. So if this is the scenario, 410 crores. Now, everything else is same. Only one thing has changed and that is this. Are you understanding? Second part, second part, second part. So selling price per unit. Say again, adverse variance in selling price unit per unit by 2.5%. So initially the selling price was 100 now it has gone down by 2.5%. So if selling price has gone down by 2.5%, so 100 minus 2.5% is 97.5. Now look here, only one variable is changing and that is selling price per unit. Everything else remains same. Everything else remains same. Change of one factor. It could be initial capital cost. It could be a selling price per unit. It could be a variable cost per unit, a fixed cost, a unit sold. It could be any damn thing. And then we have to see its impact on the overall change in the NPV. And that percentage change in NPV is what is to be measured. Higher the sensitivity, higher the change or higher, uh, as in higher the sensitivity percentage, higher the impact on NPV. So in our case, can I say it is the selling price per unit, which has changed by 24.82% is giving me the highest NPV change. Are you clear guys? 
Are you clear with this? So, this is one method. So, in case of sensitivity, in case of sensitivity, there are various methods. First method is what I taught you all. This is if change in variable is given. Change in factor. Change in factor percentage. So, this was your first method. Now, there are other methods also for sensitivity. Pay attention. Now, the second method. Second method. In this, ICAI says that make NPV 0. Make NPV 0. So, this in itself consists of two different methods. One method is called as, one method is called as equation method. And the other is called as the formula method hello one method is called as the equation method and the other is called as the formula method now suppose what will happen in this pay attention first step is calculate the current npv first step is calculate the current npv second step is you have to make the npv zero you have to make the npv zero so let the now say we are using the equation method huh? We are using the equation method. So, in case of equation method, first we will calculate the NPV. Second is going to be let the variable or the factor, let the factor to be changed be x and such that NPV is equal to 0. What is NPV guys? Can I say it is percent value of cash inflow minus cash outflow? That should be equal to 0. So, what we will do is we will find the percent value of cash inflow. How do you calculate the cash inflow? So, lay say selling price minus variable cost. Right? Now, say variable cost is given. We need to change the selling price in such a way that this multiply by the discounting factor. So, this was first plus again say x minus variable cost 2 into discounting factor 2. So, this is given, this is given, this is given. All of this minus present value of cash outflow is given say 10,000. We will get the NPV as 0. So, all of this. So, so x minus say variable cost is 200 into say discounting factor is 0 0.909 plus say x minus variable cost is say 140 into 0 0.851. This is present value of cash inflow minus present value of cash outflow is say 10,000. All of this is equal to 0. In an equation, if there is only one balancing figure, hello, in an equation, if there is only one balancing figure, we will be able to calculate that variable. We will be able to calculate that variable. Yes or no, everybody? Definitely yes, sir. And that's what the answer is in front of you. Got it, guys? Are you clear, everybody? Are you clear? So, this is your equation method. Then you have the formula method. So, how do you calculate the formula? So, here let's take an example for formula method. Formula method. So, say for example, the sales is say uh, 10,000. Let the variable cost be say 4,000. So, your contribution is say 6,000. Let the fixed cost be 2,000. And your say NPV is 4,000. Now, if I want to decrease the NPV to 0, if I want to take the NPV to 0, what should be my change in sales price? What should be my change in sales? What should be my change in sales? Can I say so easy, sir? If I change this sales, if I reduce this uh, uh, sales, say, by... 4,000 by 4,000. 
so your new sales will be sir 6000 reduce 4000 so you will get 2000 less 2000 and your NPV has become zero that's what you wanted now very easily it was done here very easily it was done here so what did we do we said that the change in the sales should be equal to 4000 now do you know how did we calculate this 4000 so i will tell you see it was this so we said that change so what is the current npv the current npv is 4000 upon say the what is the sales sales is 10000 this is worked out to 40 percent so a 40 percent change in sales has resulted in npv zero but how did this 40 percent come it is nothing but npv upon the present value of sales so always it might not be sales it could be a variable cost it could be a fixed cost it could be any factor so we will say therefore we will say therefore if npv is equal to zero npv is to be made zero if npv is to be made zero right if npv is to be made zero using formula method using formula method how will you calculate beta beta how will you calculate it will be net present value upon present value of the factor of the factor so now you have to tell me guys you have to tell me what is going to be the impact different different impacts guys so there could be different different factors and for these different factors we will have to do the calculation so say if the factor is selling price the formula will be net present value huh? this is the original net present value hello this is the original net present value upon upon present value of selling price per unit but in case it is selling price to be changed we will still take it to be sales even for selling price we will take it to be sales then there is unit cost then there is unit cost so original npv upon present value of say unit cost okay so when i say unit cost total unit cost huh, guys total unit cost or what we can say is total variable cost Okay, then sales volume. Suppose if sales volume is there, then, then we will say net present value upon present value of cash inflow plus present value of fixed cost. Fixed cost, huh? Yeah, present value of cash inflow upon percent value of fixed cost then so this is how different different formats are to be used if if npv is to be made zero if npv is to be made zero got it guys done 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 and then there is one more method so see here First method, second method. Now we have the third method. So, sensitivity and then we write down the third method. In this, by default, ICAI assumes 10% adverse variance 
by default icai assumes 10% adverse variance by default icai assumes adverse variance got it guys so by default take 10% adverse variance and solve it so in all first method the the exact percentage will be given in case of second method there are two different methods equation method and the other is tell me formula method and then there is this third method in case of equation method i gave you an example in case of formula method here are the formulas that we have and then we have the by default ICI assumes it to be 10 percent now whatever the examiner says you have to solve it accordingly you have to solve it accordingly gotcha everybody with this we complete OMG. With this, we complete the sensitivity analysis. Next comes the scenario analysis. In this scenario analysis, there will be various scenarios which will be given. There will be various scenarios. What are the various scenarios? Worst case, most likely and the best case. We will have to calculate the cash flows for the worst case. We will have to calculate the cash flows for the most likely and we will have to cal calculate the cash flows for the best case. We will have to calculate the cash flows for the best case. So, all of these three cases, we will have to calculate the net present value. Then the question will say, pick the worst case, pick the most likely case, pick the best case. That's okay. So, this is nothing but the probability method. Just that they have given a name. Worst case, most likely case, best case. Just that they have given a name. That's it. Nothing else. Are you clear, everyone? So, that's how this system works. I hope we are clear then we have the simulation analysis the worst method and trust me will never come in exam but still my job to teach you i will do it don't worry now they will give you annual cash flows and they will give you the project life for this they have also given certain random numbers see here annual cash flows is represented by red and the project life is represented by green so red green so, red and green, red and green is what we have. Annual cash flow, red, project life, green. Now, tell me how will it work. So, see here, I will teach you. For the first time, you have to calculate the probability. See, I will teach you the steps for simulation. I will teach you the steps for simulation. Pay attention. So, first we will have to calculate the probability then we will calculate the cumulative probability and then you will have to calculate the range in this question say probability is given 0 0.02 0 0.03 so 0 0.02 0 0.03 0 0.15 0.15 0.30 0.20.15 now how do you calculate the cumulative probability so it will be 0 0.02 add 0 0.05 add 0 0.20 add 0 0.35 add 0 0.65 add 0.85 add 1.00 point zero zero. and then you have to learn to calculate the range how do you calculate the range Always remember the range starts at 0, 0, ends at 9, 9. Because based on this range, the random numbers will be selected. Hello? Based on this range, the random numbers will be selected. And let me tell you guys, the random number selection is always of two digits. So, 0, 0, it starts. If this is 2, say 0, 1. Always this will be minus 1. So, say this is 5. Minus 1, this will be 0, 4. This is 20, this will be minus 1, 19. This is 35, minus 1, 34. Hello, are you clear? Now, the first, if this is 0, 0, 0, 0 1, this is 0, 2, 0, 4. If this is 19, this is going to be 0, 5 to 19. If this is 19, this is going to be 20 to 34. Then this will be 35 to 64. 65 to 84 and finally 85 to 99. If you want to check, you can check. 85 to 19, 99 are 15 numbers. 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. 15, 
and here total 15. Check anyone, 20 to 34, 20 to 34 are 15 numbers. See the probability here, 15. Are you clear? Who will teach you all of this in the revision session yet? Yes or no? Sure, please comment if you're liking it. Thank you so much. Now, this is your cash flows. In the same way, we will have the project life value and probability. So, your cash flows are given. First cash flow is given as 10,000. So, see here. Now, based on this, we will have to select the random numbers. What is the first random number, guys? It is 53. 53 falls where? 53 falls where? Come on, tell me. So, 53 falls here. 35 to 64. So, we will check. 35 to 64 is at 30,000. 35. So, first cash inflow is 30,000. The second number is 97. 97 falls where? 947 falls here. So, same, same way here you have to do for project life also. Probability, cumulative probability range. So, once you are done with that. Now, 97 falls where? 97 falls at 9. 97 falls at 9. So, here 97 falls at 9. Now what you have to do? 30,000 cash flows for 9 years. So discount at 9 years. What is the discounting rate that is given in the question? It will be given in the question and it is 10%. So discount 30,000 at 10% for 9 years. So 1 divided by 1.1. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. GT will give you 5.579 NPV. In this way, we have to calculate the NPV for all the 10 runs which are possible. And this is how you complete the simulation analysis. Hopeless, but if it was there, we had to do it. We had no option. So, what, what it is? What's the step for simulation? Probability, cumulative probability, range. Always do minus 1 in cumulative probability to get the range to get the range. got it guys done then comes the decision tree approach so in decision tree the they will give you the question go as per what the question is saying so here say if i do the test 2 lakh 40 000 if i don't do the test no test so if i do the test and then there are chances of 50% success, 50% failure. If there is a success and I invest, then I may earn 4 lakh rupees. Again, I mean plan not to invest. If there is a failure and if I invest, what is the amount of money that I am getting? And at every node, hello, at every node we have to check what exactly is the scenario. What exactly is the scenario? And that basically is called as the decision tree. Is called as the decision tree. So, for you, I have taken a classic example and that is Master Sum 1. Please open Master Sum 1. What a classic example in order to understand the concept of decision tree. See here, cash outflow 80,000. Investment proposal 2 years. In year 1, 40% probability cash inflow 50,000. In year, then 60% probability cash inflow will be 60,000. In the year 2, Again, if it is 50,000, this is the scenario. If it is 60,000, this is the scenario. Now, let's make a whole decision tree. Let's make a whole decision tree. So, we will start first with the cash outflow of say 80,000, which is given in the question. Hello, it is given in the question. Yeah, it is given in the question. Here it is. Yes? Okay, done. Then, Chances are 40% chance, 50,000, 60% chance, 60,000. So, we will start 1, 2, 40% chance, 60% chance, 40% chance, 50,000, 60% chance, 60% chance, 60,000. If it turns out to be 50,000, then again there are three chances. Then again there are three chances. What are the three chances? What are the three chances? 
सर ट्वेंटी फोर थर्टी टू फोर्टी फोर सो वी विल राइट ट्वेंटी फोर थर्टी टू फोर्टी फोर वॉट आर द चांसेस दैट इट विल बी ट्वेंटी फोर सो इट इज सर पॉइंट टू पॉइंट थ्री पॉइंट फाइव What are the chances that it will be sixty thousand? What are the chances? Point four, point five, point one. That forty, fifty, sixty. So it will be forty, fifty, and sixty. What are the chances that if it is sixty, it will be forty? Point four, point five, point one. So point four, point five, point one. Hey, something to do. And then finally, hello. We will have the decision tree ready. This is your decision tree. Now see what is going to happen. Now see what is going to happen. What are the chances that fifty thousand and then twenty four? So we will have to calculate something called as a joint probability. How many joint probability paths are there? If you observe, first part is if it is fifty thousand, a probability of point four. Then it will be twenty four thousand. A probability of point four. A joint probability, a joint probability of zero point zero eight. Then the second part, the second path, not part. We will write here path. The second path. What is going to be the second path? Same fifty thousand, but this time it is going to be thirty two thousand. So fifty thousand, thirty two thousand, point four and point three. So the joint probability will be point one two. This joint probability will be used in order to calculate the net percent value. See here. See here. See this is the paths that are possible. Six paths and they are joint probabilities. And this will be used to calculate the cash net percent value. So first fifty thousand, then twenty four thousand total cash inflow. Six five two seven four cash outflow is always going to be eighty thousand. So this is your net present value, eighteen fourteen seven twenty six. What is the probability that it will be fourteen seven twenty six point zero eight? And the answer is one one seven eight. Are you clear, everybody, guys? Yes. Same way for all the other paths, all the other paths. Same way. Forty-five, four fifty. The other part is thirty-two thousand. We will create it at get it at the percent value. To this, we will apply the joint probability. To this, we will apply the joint probability. Get the expected NPV, and that's how my whole concept of decision tree with joint probability is also taken care of. So, what I will do in case of decision tree, guys? What I will do in case of decision tree? Calculate the joint probability. so paths we will write here then we will calculate the joint probability right using this we will first calculate the cash inflow of first scenario cash inflow of second scenario minus cash outflow we will get the net present value so present value of cash inflow present value of cash inflow of second scenario we will get the net present value to which we will multiply the joint probability we will get the final net present value expected net present value got it guys follow this whole thing follow this whole thing acha everybody Yes, guys. Done. Now, so decision tree is also done, 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 done. Okay, and now we are almost coming to the last of the concept. Yes, and that is replacement decision. Pay attention. Now, in case of, in case of machineries, this is where the concept is highly going to be used. the replacement decision concept pay attention hmm first is there are going to be variations in this concept one is purely 
whether a old machine has to be replaced with a new machine if that is to be done then this is the format to be followed so what is the format step 1 we have to first find out the net cash outflow now net cash outflow is obviously the purchase price of the machine is the real net cash outflow but we will deduct from it we will deduct from it any amount of tax savings that we are going to get and that is to be deducted so your see your uh, replacement decisions is as follows so first step 1 net cash outflow net cash outflow so first the net cash outflow is basically cost of new equipment by default what is it minus if we have got any market value of old equipment which is the scrap value that we are going to get and any tax payable or savings from sale tax savings from sale so in one of the questions we have that so we have to discuss now about the replacement policy we have to now discuss about the replacement policy now how do you calculate the replacement policy is first step will always be purchase cost minus purchase cost minus cash sale value of old machine so any money that we have got less then the next is savings from sale tax saving from sales sir how will it result into a tax saving uh, from sale can anybody tell me the answer is yes suppose if there is a book value see here now how do you calculate the tax savings from sale okay suppose the book value is there say book value of machine is there so from this book value when we reduce the market value so say when we reduce the market value now the book value of machine is say 7500 and the market value of the machine is say 5000 as per books you have made a loss hello as per books you have made a loss of 2500 on this loss see remember whenever you are doing any expense or whenever there is a loss you get tax benefit whenever there is a income you get tax loss so here there is a loss or expense tax benefit any income tax loss so here income is being lost so we will get tax benefit how much into tax percentage say 30% so 2500 into 0.3 is 750 so we are getting a tax benefit of 750 cash sale is say 5000 say purchase cost was 40000 how much is your net cost of the new machine how much is the net cost of the new machine well guys it is 40000 minus 5750 and it is 34250 hey are you understanding everybody so this is the first part hello this is the first part net cash outflow second let's move on to the second part of the question so see here if it it is a loss it will result in tax benefit it is a profit it will result in tax pay simple clear now the second expected changes in cash flows if replacement decision is implemented see here now whenever i am purchasing a new machine there has to be some end intent with which i am purchasing the new machine what could be the what would be the end intent any guesses anybody the end intent is always very clear to ensure that my production increases my sales increases my variable cost goes down all of that is a positive so change in cash flows per year change in cash flow could be change in sales positive change in operating cost positive less change in depreciation 
earlier my depreciation amount was say on old machine it would be lower on new machine it would be higher so on account of that that change in depreciation uh, that the tax benefit will go down so all of that taken into picture will give me my change in cash flows will give me my change in cash flows are you understanding guys so this is about your change in cash flows and then obviously now this change in depreciation which was confusing you here it is see depreciation of new machine obviously will be higher than the depreciation of the old machine so say depreciation of new machine is say 30000 and depreciation of the new old machine was say depreciation of new machine uh, 30000 old machine was 10000 so 10000 extra depreciation will result into a benefit how much how much so whatever will be the tax rate is going to be my benefit is going to be my benefit gotcha everybody so see effectively what is going to happen i'll explain you see effectively what is going to happen i'll explain you so say step 2 sales increase say by 10000 variable cost increase say by 5000 depreciation say increase by say 3000 okay just just take an example so this increases by say 18000 okay so effectively what happens is this is your net increase how much 18 but minus 5 minus 3 so 18 minus 5 is 13 minus 3 is 10,000 so net increase is 10,000 to which tax will be deducted at the rate 30 percent so this will become 7,000 hello this will become 7,000 so 7,000 is the increase in cash flow but at the same time but at the same time there is a change in depreciation as well earlier my depreciation used to be different now my depreciation has increased so say my depreciation has increased by say 3000 just an example here has increased by 3000 so in all change in cash flow which is the second part change in cash flow which is the second part will become 10,000 are you clear so see here in the first case I just remove this in the first case change in cash flow is change in sales positive yeah change in sales is positive how much say 10,000 say a uh, change in variable cost say 5,000 better less if now uh, less change in depreciation earlier we used to charge 30,000 now we are charging uh, earlier we used to charge 20,000 now we are charging 30,000 so the cost effectively in terms of tax rate benefit has now decreased so this is all on account of the impact is of tax benefit 1 minus tax rate so net how much you have earned after tax is 0 0.7 just an example this will be 0. Yeah, this will be 0 0.7 plus obviously the effect of the depreciation that we do you remember EBIT EBT less tax is equal to cash inflow add back depreciation this is that add the depreciation this change in depreciation is written to give the tax benefit add back depreciation is written to ensure that we just take the cash flows we just take the cash flow so that's the reason we add back depreciation got it everyone dun, 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 dun. and then we are done so step one step two gives us the inflow and outflow step one basically tells us what is the cash outflow step two tells us the what is the cash inflow then so present value of yearly cash inflows as per step two plus estimated value of salvage of new system that is the inflow so we will get the present value of benefit as per step 3 minus present value of cost as per step 1. Finally, decision rule. If the present value is positive, hello, if the present value is positive, except else 
reject samjhidu then see <coughs> i have taken a classic example for you this is the example that i almost explained to you all and this is what you can see now you will be able to solve it based on what i told you all see here i had purchased a new system i had purchased a new system for 25000 just an example on that sorry of 50000 5000 is the cash inflow that i got from that but what is this 2250 book value minus sales and we got loss on that loss 30% tax benefit we will get the tax benefit on account of sale of old system right guys done then we have the cost of new system then finally the next part is estimated change in cash flows if replacement addition is implemented this is related to whole your depreciation part then whatever cash inflow we have got we will discount it for 5 years salvage value okay step 3 minus step 1 and we will get positive npv then we have the optimum replacement cycle a very all the last concept i guess yes the last concept of this chapter and it is optimum replacement cycle this is basically when should you replace when the equated annual cost is the lowest i will replace so my present value of cash outflow divided by present value annuity factor so say i'll just take this example in order to make you understand so i have operating costs and i have resale value hello i have the operating cost and i have the resale values so using all of this so see here 180000 into 0.909 Plus two lakh eighty thousand into point nine nine. So if I sell after one year, so if I replace after one year, there is a for one year I will have to incur that one lakh eighty. But if I sell after one year, I will get two lakh eighty. And two days after two days cost is four lakh. So what I will do is one lakh eighty thousand get it at present value. So today I am incurring one lakh eighty thousand into point nine nine. Today I am getting two lakh eighty thousand into point nine nine. And today I have to incur a cost of four lakh. So if today everything is to be done, three lakh nine thousand one hundred will go from my pocket. In case of second NPV of taxi for two years, so for two years if I am incurring, so see here now when I take this for two years, my cost is of also two years. So one lakh eighty thousand is there plus two lakh ten thousand. This two lakh ten thousand is lost somewhere. Plus two lakh ten thousand into point eight two six. So these are the two costs. But eventually, I will sell it at say two lakh thirty thousand. So what they have done is they have taken the net effect. Two lakh ten thousand cost. Two lakh thirty thousand resale. So net is taken as two lakh uh, total twenty thousand positive. So plus. So what can be done here is this. Either we can directly take. Uh -oh. either we can directly take 20000 or 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 210000 is the cost plus 230000 is the resale into 0.826 net plus 20 into 0.826 so after 2 years i will get net 20000 get it at present value after 1 year i will have to incur 180000 get it at present value and today only i will have to incur 4 lakh so for 2 years hello for 2 years i have incurred a cost of 547 100 because i have incurred this cost for 2 years i should ideally divide it by 2 but in but instead of dividing it by 2 we are making it more precise by dividing it by the present value annuity factor for 2 years now so the same thing will happen for 3 years also and this we will divide by the present value annuity factor for 3 years hey subjugudu are we clear everybody and with this we decide the replacement decisions with this we decide the replacement decisions and guys almost one and a half hour and we are done with the whole revision of this chapter yes how was it now whenever you revise you will be able to manage pretty pretty easily the last concept was optimum replacement cycle o r c so it is present value of cash outflow
upon percent value annuity factor based on number of years. 10 dana dan dan. Okay. So, yes, guys, how was the experience? Awesome. Done. So, let me tell you, we are done with the whole. Yes. Got it. Okay, there. Hello, hello, hello. So, we have another. A, a concept called as Hiller's model, which ICA has put in one sum, but uh, they have not explained it anywhere. And that basically is called as the Hiller's model. Yes, see here. Uh, I have specifically showed it to you here. I'll show it to you here. So that is the Hiller's model. See here. And what is Hiller's model? Let me explain it to you. Everybody, just pay attention. And I am going to explain you the last concept of this chapter, which, ladies and gentlemen, is called as Hiller's model. Now, suppose if I give you a cash flow, suppose if I tell you you are going to earn cash flows after one year, I am going to tell you you are going to earn cash flows after two years, I am going to tell you you are going to earn cash flows after three years, you will say like, okay, sir, good, fair enough. But suppose if I tell you that bring all of these cash flows to percent value. Suppose if I tell you bring all of these cash flows to percent value, what will you do? Can I say you will discount it? Correct. I, you will immediately, what you will immediately do is, sir, 1 plus discounting factor raised to 1. And we will get the percent value of cash flow after 1 year. Correct, correct, sir. Say 1 plus discounting factor raised to 2. 1 plus discounting factor raised to 3. And third year's cash flow will also be bought at the percent value. All of you agree to it? Yes, sir. We totally agree to it. Now, my point is the way we bring the cash flows to the percent value, we call it the percent value of cash inflow. We call it the percent value of cash inflow. In the same way, there is a concept which is called as the present value of standard deviation. Yes, you heard that right. Present value. Hello. It is called as present value of standard deviation. And that is what we are going to understand using something called as the Hiller's model. It's very easy. You don't have to worry at all. Now, if I say that, suppose I want to calculate the present value for standard deviation, what will be your initial reaction? So, you will say that, sir, the way we calculated present value for cash inflow, in the same way we will calculate the present value of uh, standard deviation. I'm like, okay, correct. How will you do it? So, you will start saying, sir, standard deviation of 1 and, sir, we will bring it to present value. Fair enough. Sir, another time, sir, standard deviation of 2. And, sir, we will bring it to present value. Okay, fair enough. Sir, standard deviation 3. We will bring it to present value. Sir, fair enough. So, this is how you will bring the, calculate the percent value of standard deviation. Well, absolutely right. Now, suppose if I tell you, let me calculate the variance of present value or percent value of variance. What will you do? Tell me what is the thing that you are going to do. Let me copy this there so that we are in the same path. Everybody, so that we are in the same path. So now I am, hello, I am calculating the percent value of standard deviation. I have called calculated. Now if I tell you, tell me how to calculate the percent value of variance. Tell me what will you do. Tell me what will you do? Can I say you will basically square this? Once you square this, you will get the percent value of variance. So can I say you will say so standard deviation 1 square upon 1 plus discounting factor 1. Now if you know a little bit of mathematics, when you are going to square this, it will become multiplied by 2. Okay. Yes, sir. Fair enough. Okay. Done. I am continuing. I am continuing. Now, suppose if I want to calculate the uh, uh, variance of second year, what will you do? Sir, what we will do is, this was standard deviation. No, no. Okay. Sir, standard deviation 2, 
द होल स्क्वेर अपॉन सर वन प्लस डिस्काउंटिंग फैक्टर करेक्ट कैन आई से यू विल नाउ डू टू इन टू टू इन दिस टू एंड दिस मल्टीप्लाई बाय टू आई यू अंडरस्टैंडिंग गाइस हे व्हाट्स रॉन्ग विथ यू ब्राइ यस सी यर दिस टू इज ऑलरेडी देर दिस टू इज ऑलरेडी देर नाउ वेन यू आर स्क्वेरिंग सो दिस टू मल्टीप्लाई बाय अनदर चलो सर लेट्स डू वन मोर सो दैट वी विल बी वेरी क्लियर चलो लेट्स डू सो थर्ड विल बी स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन थर्ड स्क्वेर अपॉन वन प्लस डिस्काउंटिंग फैक्टर राइट नाउ दिस थ्री इज ऑलरेडी देर मल्टीप्लाई बाय चू मल्टीप्लाई बाय चू यस एंड योर आंसर विल बी यस सर सो 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 प्रसेंट वैल्यू ऑफ वराइंस हेलो इज इज सर स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन वन स्क्वेर अपॉन वन प्लस डिस्काउंटिंग फैक्टर रेस टू वन बट दिस मल्टीप्लाई बाय स्क्वेर नाउ वी हैव डन द स्क्वेर ऑफ दिस सी फर्स्ट आई रोड प्रसेंट वैल्यू ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन टू कन्वर्ट एनी स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन इनटू वराइंस व्हाट डू यू डू स्क्वेर इट अप am i right square it up and that's what i am doing so here again i did the second standard deviation square it up 1 plus discounting factor this time 2 into 2 standard deviation third square this time 1 plus discounting factor 2 into 3 and that's how the whole system continued that's how the whole system continued am i right sir yes you are absolutely right now instead of writing or chalo instead of writing this can i also write this as variance 1 square upon 1 plus discounting factor 1 into 2 plus variance 2 square 1 plus discounting factor raised to 4 plus Variance three square upon one plus discounting factor six. Yes, sir. No problem. Are you understanding? Take deep breaths. You'll understand. Easy, easy. You will understand. And finally, if I have to calculate the the standard deviation of this, what I will do is root of it, and I will get the percent value of standard deviation. Anything. Which has variance, and if you do the root, you will get the standard deviation. So variance one square upon one plus discounting factor raised to two plus variance two square upon one plus discounting factor raised to four and variance three square upon one plus discounting factor raised to six. If it will be one more eight, ten, so on and so forth. And guys, this. is the final formula for calculating standard deviation or uh, present value for standard deviation also called as the hiller's model samjhe are you clear guys very very important concept should know can be asked in exam i have the same question in my uh, optimized also if you have optimized if not uh, you would have your uh, study module the same question is there in study module also you can refer it and see this xy company uh, in your study module it would be question 6 7 or 8 or something and in this if you see there is something called as a hiller's model for those who got confused bamboozled with this again i am telling you hiller's model basically wants the percent value for standard deviation we started with cash flows how do you bring the cash flows to percent value by discounting it then there is present value of standard deviation how do you do that so standard deviation upon the discounting factor and you will get the present value for standard deviation i want for variance can i say i will do the square of it i did the square of it i did the square of it i did the square of it and i just wrote it like that see i did the square of standard deviation and i got it i did the square and this is how it was represented the moment i did a root of this i got the standard deviation back again the main thing that we got to know from this is yes raise to 2 raise to 4 raise to 6 very very important concept now if you solve this question 
you will get the answer so very easily. See here. Your one, say here, we have to calculate, say for example, the variance. So what is the variance? X, uh, that I have already taught you in the earlier part of the revision, X minus X bar into probability. So see here, if you do the X minus X bar into the probability, hello, if you do the X minus X bar into probability and you will keep on doing that, can I say you will get the variance? So here we are, the variance and then you do the root of it and then you do the root of it. Now, when you have to apply the Hiller's model, when you have to apply the Hiller's model, what did we tell? First, write down the variance. So, we wrote the variance. So, first we wrote the variance. Variance is 185.25. Yeah, variance is 185.25. See, we got the variance here, no? When you root the variance, you got the standard deviation. But if, if, if somebody asks you what is the variance, hello, it is 185.25. It is 185.25. Am I right, everybody? So, if the variance is 185.25 and if I want to use the, I calculate the percent value for standard deviation percent value using the Hiller's model, I will say root of variance. So, this is variance upon 1 plus discounting factor square. Second, again, variance 2. Variance 2. What is variance 2? Sir, variance 2 is 95.25. Great. 95.25. Upon 1 plus discounting uh, factor 2 into 2. Raised to 2 into 2. Then raised to 2 into 3. So, this is 6. 35.25. Are you understanding everybody? Yes or no? And that's how we calculate the standard deviation about the expected value. You can call it as the present value standard deviation. Got it everybody? I want each one of you to tell me and comment, yes, sir, Hiller's model, done and dusted, understood fully and thoroughly. Yes, for you all, for all of you, I have also, I will be making this notes available. This note said all the things at one place. So, how to calculate the NPV, the sensitivity by using different methods that I have taught you all, right? Then, decision tree, the joint probability. Formula for NPV, real nominal cash flows, probability, expected probability, variance, standard deviation, coefficient of variance, risk adjusted discount rate, certainty equivalent, and finally the Hillard's model also is clear to us. So how was the session? Do let me know in the comments. Do share it with all your friends from South India who want lectures in full English. And uh, definitely, definitely like the video as well, giving me motivation to record more lectures. And you have to tell me now which chapter you want next. Yes, your command will be my decision. Waiting for your comments and a lot of love. Take care, guys. Keep smiling. Thank you so much. Yes, we'll be sharing all of this on my Telegram channel. So definitely, uh, you'll get the Telegram channel link in the comment first comment or probably also in the description box. You can uh, uh, join from there. We are also conducting a lot of MCQs there. So you can take it from there as well. So thank you so much. Keep smiling. I uh, had a great time. And hasta la vista. The next session is coming soon. Which chapter? You decide through the comments.